Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters. We're devoting ourselves to the Lord daily with you. We're picking back up with new morning mercies, and I'm just going to take it from here. What could comfort you more than these words? John 10.10. 10. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Everybody searches for life somewhere. God has placed this quest in each of our hearts. It is there to drive us to him. It is there because we were made for him. But sadly, in their lifelong quest for life, most people ignore God. In their God amnesia, they look for life where it cannot be found. And because they do, they always come up empty. It's important to realize that you can search for life in only two places. Either you have found life to the fullest vertically or you are shopping for it horizontally. This is a major piece of what Paul is writing about in Romans 125 when he says, They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. What is that lie? It is the lie that was first told in the Garden of Eden. The false promise that life, heart-satisfying life, could be found somewhere outside the Creator. It is the lie of lies, the cruelest lie ever told. If you believe it, it will not only leave you empty and discouraged, but it will set your life on a course of destruction. The physical created world is full of engaging and entertaining delights, but it is important to understand that nothing in this physical world can give you the life that your heart longs for. By the way, I'm just going to reread that because that's the whole point of this devotional. You need it. I need it. Let's let that wash over us. The physical created world is full. It's so full of engaging and entertaining delights. But it is important to understand that nothing in the physical world can give us the life that our hearts long for. The delights of the physical world were carefully crafted to point to the one who alone is able to give your heart eternal delight. God alone is able to bring the deepest of joy and contentment to your heart. He alone is able to give you a reason for getting up in the morning and a purpose for living. He alone can infuse your heart with hope, no matter what is going on around you. So in amazing grace, he welcomes you to surrender all your hopes and dreams to him. In love, he beckons you to follow. Again today, he promises you life. It's what he came to live, die, and rise again to give you. That empty tomb, that empty tomb not only means that he conquered death, but it tells you that he has life in his hands, the kind of life all human beings were designed to long for, whether they know it or they don't. You can't find or earn that life on your own. It is yours only by means of the work of another. Could it be today that you will fretfully search horizontally for what you have already been given in Christ? Will you try to drink from an empty well when you have already been given thirst quenching living water? And I'm, you know, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. You all know this. I know it. We need this reminder. This is one of those gut check, heart piercer, much needed reminders about our posture in Christ because it seems like every day there's a new thing that we could worship. You know, I, I saw this thing. Whenever I first moved to New York City, I was downloading all these different videos on New York about like, there's this, uh, there's this, TV show on the Food Network called Diners, uh, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Bars, or something like that, right? It's about like restaurants in New York City. And basically, they gave this stat that is like you could go to a new restaurant in New York City every day for nine years and not go to the same restaurant. Isn't that crazy? And so I could literally try a new place, be unhappy. Next day, try a new place, be unhappy. I could continue that for nine straight years without acknowledging that maybe the restaurant's not the problem. Maybe I'm the problem. Maybe the problem is I want to be home. I want to feel at peace. I I want to be with my father. And he is with me whenever I embrace him, when I seek him. And so, of course, that's a metaphor. And I think that's the crutch of this whole thing is for us to acknowledge, yes, creation is very creative and it's sometimes really beautiful, insanely engaging, sometimes addicting. And it has this way of drawing us in and leaving us 
unread, leaving us empty. And we'll never get from creation what, what we were designed to get from the creator. And that this line really convicted me. I almost didn't like the line. I liked it, but I didn't like it. You know what I mean? He welcomes you to surrender all your hopes and dreams to him. Are you ready to surrender your hopes and dreams to him for a greater purpose, for a greater joy, a greater contentment? I'm scared to do that. I'm going to do it, but I'm scared to. And I want you to have the humility. If you are struggling to commit your hopes and dreams to him, that's understandable. But we have to understand that what he has in store for us is far better than what we have in store for us. Because again, God sees the end from the beginning for his purposes and his glory and it, this time on earth is not our own personal trial of life, this taste test of us just getting to scratch every itch, do whatever we want. If we're a follower of Christ, we can follow our own selfishness or we can follow Christ and selflessness. And so we have to choose which way we want to go. And so this is a tough one, but it's so needed for us to just say it just puts us in our place. It puts us where we belong, but more importantly, it puts God where he belongs, on the throne of our heart. It takes that thing that we say, if only I had this, then I would be happy, or then I would be content, or then I would feel enough, or then I would be okay. It takes that thing, and it kicks it off the throne and puts God back there where he rightfully belongs. And I'm not making creation the enemy. I'm putting it in its proper place, which is not in the throne of our hearts. That's the key here. I know you are getting this. I'm with you. I'm getting it too. Praise God for this wonderful reminder. I'm going to pray. Lord, you are so faithful to us, even whenever we are not faithful to you. Lord, help us remove all the idols and created things off the throne of our heart. These little mini things that we worship in your place, they do not belong there, Lord. Help us to put you in that place. Help us to cast our, our, our eyes upon you and not the created world. Lord, help us to, to worship you. Help us to seek you, God. We need your help to actually desire to seek you. Every day there's a new thing that we can get distracted with, God. Would you make it more simple on your believers, on your followers, on your children to desire you? Would you give us a stronger discipline? Give, her a, give us a stronger faith? Give us stronger discernment? Would you, would you make us stronger to desire you, Lord? Or if that means that your strength comes in where we're weak, that's fine too, Lord. We love you and we pray in your son's name. Amen. Oh, amen, y'all. Now is that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, continue present to the Lord. Don't forget that you are God's masterpiece and don't forget, <laughs> don't forget that we love you. We love you and we'll be talking to you tomorrow. Told scenes.